If you give this cube to your friends, they'll try turning it one way, another way. It doesn't really turn, does it? And then you tell them to turn it on the white or yellow face, and they're like, well, that's not how a 3x3 three three is supposed to turn. And that's the point of this cube. It's called the Evil Twin 3x3 three three because it looks like a 3x3, three three, but in reality it has nothing to do with a 3x3. Three three. It's uh, a fused 2x2 two two with uh, extensions uh, glued on as well as extra cubies. The puzzle is the same size as a 57mm 3x3, three three, uh, but I just don't have a normal one. I have a carbon fiber one here. So on the outside it actually looks pretty good, pretty close to what a uh, 3x3 three three is. I made it using Isheen Mini 2x2's two which are 12mm each and since cubies are 19mm each on the final product that meant I couldn't just stick them into a connecting piece to make the fuse 2x2. Two two. I actually had to cut off uh, some of the corner parts to make them fit as you saw in the build part. Now this isn't a new idea, it's uh, a very old design that was originally created by Mike Grimsley, but when he created it, it was actually made out of uh, Siamese 2x2s and not a uh, fused 2x2, two two, so it would have turned a bit differently and you wouldn't have had this diagonal pattern. Uh, I don't know who made the first fused 2x2, two two, but of course I didn't come up with the idea. So I decided to make the extensions available publicly. You can go download the files now and make one of these yourself. And I also didn't sand the pieces, like, at all. And that's to show that you don't need to be really skilled uh, with making mods or anything like that. I did the bare minimum that you can do, and it's really not a lot of work or hard work and uh, the product is honestly great. I really like how this puzzle looks and turns. So, absolutely, go make one for yourself. So when scrambling it, you need to make sure to scramble both of the mini 2x2s. So I'll scramble it now. Now that the cube is thoroughly scrambled, I'll try solving it. I guess first I'll do one of the fused 2x2s, two two, and then I'll do the other one. So let's give it a shot. So you can see that we've solved the white layer, and I guess it wasn't actually that bad. So now I'll try solving the second layer of the mini 2x2, two two, which should be a bit harder.
Alright, so I think the first 2x2 two two is actually solved, because you see this first layer is solved, and then all of these pieces uh, seem to be correct. And I think this uh, empty space is just because the piece that goes here is actually provided by this other 2x2. Two two. You can see it's kind of symmetrical. Uh, this 2x2 two two provides this piece, and this 2x2 two two provides this piece. So, uh, yeah, I guess now I'll just get to work on solving the yellow side. Well, it's not exactly solved, but this is kind of what a what looks to be a weird pattern. You can see I've put all of the yellow pieces together, and then the white and this are are still like intact, but I don't know. It just looks like this orange is encasing this uh, yellow. And overall, I need to figure out a way to get one of these 2x2's two two into their proper orientation because right now that's what's happened basically uh, some of this uh, some of the connections between the fused 2x2 two two, the connection b between the two 2x2's two has been kind of shifted a bit Alright, finally, the yellow side has been completed, and uh, the white side is still untouched, as well as the second layer in quotation marks of this 2x2. Uh, two two. So now all I have to do is complete kind of this part of this particular 2x2, uh, two two. and I have to try and do that while avoiding the limitations of the external bandaging. And it's done! Wow, that was really a unique experience, I have to say. So, it was very similar to solving just two 2x2s. Two two and the white 2x2 two two went by extremely quickly and smoothly. But then solving this one, it was like you're doing an algorithm and then in the middle of the algorithm, you just have the other puzzle blocking your move. So now you have to go over to the other puzzle and shift it around. See, maybe you can move the pieces so that they don't block the rest of your algorithm. Wow, that was a real experience, I must say. And by the end, I actually found a position for the other puzzle like the one that I wasn't working on, in which, uh, actually, it didn't really interfere much with algorithms, which was nice and, uh, helped me solve this, uh, the rest of the way. It definitely helped, uh, to know some 3x3x2 algorithms, uh, and not just normal 2x2 algorithms, as, uh, some of the situations uh, were like that. Overall, I'm actually really impressed with this puzzle. It turns fairly nicely. There were it only caught a bit during the solve. It 
is a really interesting solve, one of the most interesting ones I've seen so far. And overall, I just like it as a puzzle. If you want one of your own and you have two 24mm 2x2s, make sure to check out the files on Thingiverse and uh, print your own. That's all for this video. Thank you all very much for watching and have a great afternoon.